What's up, Scrappy Peeves? It's Adele from Mickey Quill, and I've got a bit of a mixed media process video for you today. Now, I'm cheating a little bit because in a video, which I will write here below because I've forgotten which one it was, I did a background with some packaging technique and there was too much ink on it. So I just got another piece of cardstock at the time and smushed it all up. So the good thing about that was that it gave me a background for next time. So next time you're using a lot of paint or mist or watercolor, whatever you have, and you've got too much on your cardstock, grab another piece, just plonk it on top, and it gives you a background for next time and you don't have to get messy again. It's so good. So this was done with some dilutions, I think, I'm guessing so. And it's a nine by 12 layout today. So this is on Basil Marshmallow cardstock. And I grabbed this, I have quite a bit of 12 by 12 papers, but I never think to use them. And I know you're thinking, Adele, that sounds a bit stupid, but, I use mainly paper pads and I never think of actually using the expensive $2.50 sheets of <laughs> cardstock, of pattern paper. So I decided to use one today and that was a diagonal stripe. I think it was from an older Scraptastic kit possibly. And I'm doing a bit of a, a scrap stash sat day today. Um, I'm going through my six by six gather crepe paper paper pad and going through my scraps that I just shove at the front because what I like to do is I like to keep my paper pad scraps together in the paper pad until the paper pad is has only got maybe four or five sheets left in the whole thing. I just find that it's easier because they they coordinate and I I prefer to do that then move those little scraps into my actual scrap box. But once the paper pad is kind of dead, then I do move it into my scraps box. So I'm adding a little doily here and just having a bit of fun with some cheating with some little paper scraps in the background here. You don't need huge bits of paper to layer. I usually like to do a large piece I usually like to match the photo at least once completely. So all the way around, which is what I did with that stripy paper. And then I just go for it and do some, some little bits, some big bits, some rectangle shapes, some square shapes, whatever, whatever takes my fancy. This was probably my favorite paper in this whole collection. And I'm trying to work out a way to exploit this piece of paper without making without wasting any so I cut it into an L shape and this is a good this is a good trick if you're either if you have a low paper stash or if it's one of your favorite pieces of paper you can just cut an L shape and no one will know except for all of the people watching this video that it's not an entire piece of paper hidden behind there what I an alternative to this is if you have a piece of paper that you're trying to get rid of, use that sucker up. Don't do this if you're trying to get rid of a piece of paper that's been in your stash for a long time or it's a color that you don't usually use. Use that whole piece of paper. But for that one, I wanted to save it. So I'm just going through and finding, I just keep this little um, container of textures and tissue paper doilies paper bags, all sorts of things. And I added some vellum and a glassine bag to the background there. And I'm actually going to use that glassine bag for um, some journaling in a little while. So I decided here, I don't know why I wanted to add this little piece of journaling space because I knew at this point that I was going to journal and stick it in that bag. But pregnancy brain, I think, made me do things that I didn't expect to do. <laughs> So I just went through some little DIY embellishments that I had previously made and I'm just sticking those on in a little cluster over to the side here. And this, this layout is quite, it's quite a busy one, um, but I really like how it worked out and the, the background mixed media doesn't appear as busy because it is just one tone. I think if I was to use a few different colors or a few 
Um, even just a few different shades of blue, it would have looked a lot busier. But because I only did one, it's not too bad. So I'm adding a few little embellishments here and cheating and adding a little bit of extra paper. <laughs> Always cheating with the products to make it look like you've used more. I'm adding some puffy stickers here from Studio Calico from ages and ages ago. I have a little box on my desk of embellishments that I try and use up as much as I can. I would be interested to know how, what is on your desktop? Let's start a conversation in the comments section. What's on your desktop? So are you the type of person that likes a very clean desk and you bring the products from elsewhere onto your desk as you need them? Or are you someone that has everything on your desk? Or do you have a small space that you might have a like a trolley that you wheel over to be next to a surface, your dining table or bench or wherever? Personally, I like to have some things within arm's reach on my desk. I find that if they're not there, I don't use them. So I have these little white containers that I got from Ikea um, that stack, that can, well, they don't really stack on top of each other when you have things overflowing out of them, but I make it work. Um, and I have one that has wood veneer in it, one that has chunky embellishments that I've made, and then... I also have a, another container of packaged embellishments. I have another small container of Project Life cards. I have, and then I have a magazine. It's like a brochure holder, magazine holder that I got from Officeworks that I keep new sticker sheets in. I might, if you'd like to see a little updated desk tour video, let me know and I will film one. But I'd be interested to know, what do you keep on your desktop? I pretty much have everything that I use in every video. So I have my, I have a container that has my heat gun and camera bits. I have another container that has scissors and glue and paper towel in it. I have a lot of stuff on my desk, but I have quite a wide desk as well. So I'm just adding all sorts of little embellishments here while I've been yakking on about the interesting topic that is desktops. I'm a nerd like that though. I will happily search if I can't sleep at 2am in the morning, which while pregnant was a lot of nights, I will hop onto Pinterest and just search craft desks and just be captivated for a good couple of hours looking at people's craft spaces. <laughs> Are you like me? Do you like do you like looking at craft spaces? Hardy shine, shake, 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 shake your hardy shine, shake your hardy shine, hardy shine shaken. I did pause the camera and shake it a whole lot more because with that gold, you've got to shake it up, baby, because it just leaves this weird oil kind of residue ring around it if you don't shake it enough. By the way, to anyone wondering, it is called Heidi Swap Color Shine if you go to look for it. I just call it Heidi Shine after a bit of a tongue twister blooper. Many, many, many. Was that like over a year ago? It was a long time ago. I think that was like two years. No. Maybe the first Inky June Marathon, possibly. And I'm done because the jazz hands are out. So please let me know in the comments below, what do you keep on your desk and why? Why do you keep it there or why don't you keep it there? Um, I did recently have to remove my tiny word stickers from under my desk because Frida has discovered that she can pull them down and eat them, which is great fun. Frida's my bunny, if you're not sure. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I had a really great time creating this layout. It's very textury. It's very bumpy. And I just freaking love it. So thanks, guys. And I will see you all in the next video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And bye. Bye.